Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. Hey everyone, welcome back to In this episode, we go on a three day and two night hike into the Grand Canyon, right down to the Colorado River, and then back out. We came from Page, Arizona, and camped overnight just outside of the park. And then the next day we went in and we tried to get a backcountry pass. Now it usually takes about a month, sometimes even two months to, to get a pass, but we were lucky. We walked in and the last one was available. So we were very excited about that. Um, just because of the timing of our trip, it worked out perfectly. Hey, we just went to the backpack, or sorry, the backcountry office, and normally you have to wait oh, one to four months. You have to plan in advance, but they found us. We got the last sites, and so we are going on a two-night hiking trip into the Grand Canyon. Woo! As soon as we got our passes, we headed back to camp and began the job of packing for a three-day, two-night trip. Now, for five people, that's quite a bit of gear. We packed five backpacks with five Helinox chairs, five sleeping bags, two tents, our jet boil uh, cooking equipment, made sure we had enough propane and gas to fuel that, enough food for three meals a day. Um, a lot, of, just a lot of gear, but it was, uh, it was fun. We got everything packed up and got ready. Went to bed early for getting up early the next morning to hike into the canyon. Getting all geared up? Yes. So we're getting packed up for three days and two nights in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Should be fun. We've got five backpacks, five sleeping bags, five thermorests, sleeping mats. What else do you got in there? We're gonna have five Helinox chairs to sit down on. Here we are going over last minute packing and making sure we have everything. We're gonna grab a shuttle, leaving the motorhome here and uh, taking a shuttle to the trailhead. Looking forward to an adventure. We'll take you along with us. as the canyon walls rose higher above us as we descended towards the Colorado River and we became exposed to the vastness of the Grand Canyon. Best hike ever.
look, there's switchbacks over there. Pueblo Indians, Hopi life in Wapi Village. Huh. Huh. It's really, really cool. At the end of the trail, we made it to the Black Suspension Bridge, which spans the Colorado River. We then carried on with tired feet to the Bright Angel Campground, where we picked a site and set up camp for the night next to the cottonwood trees and the calm babble of the Bright Angel Creek. Bright Angel Creek. If you've ever seen that movie Brighty of Grand Canyon, that took place right down here. The water's ice cold, but it feels really good on my feet, which are quite sore from that hike down. After getting set up in camp, we walked about a mile into the canyon to a place called Phantom Ranch. This is a very, very remote camp that's only accessible by hikers and by mule train. And we went into the little store there and got our water bottles refilled and our cups with their delicious ice cold lemonade, which they're so famous for. And if you ever go down there, you have to get yourself a cup of lemonade. Yeah. 
patio. We used to go there after it. When she got their feet. That was one lemonade after a nice leg. Kayak down there? Uh, not this time. <laughs> Stars are starting to come out though. Just took a hike down to the Colorado. The powerful, fast moving river that has been carving out this canyon for eons. And uh, yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to go swimming in there. It is, it's moving very very rapidly so and it's beautiful to see it's nothing like being in the bottom of the Grand Canyon at the Phantom Ranch they have a little amphitheater where the park rangers do a show every night or so and that night there was going to be a talk on mountain lions so as the sun went down we made our way to the amphitheater and we enjoyed a really incredible informative talk about the native mountain lions that live in the valley it made us get in a little closer to everybody when we started thinking about these eight foot long lions that were creeping around in the forest. But we also learned that they're afraid of humans and they don't bother anyone. In fact, there's never been an incident with a mountain lion and a hiker in the Grand Canyon. So, but it was an incredibly informative e evening put on by the park rangers that night. Come on up here. What's your name? All right, Gavin, so Gavin, um, why don't you show everybody really quick what a vertical leap is, just jumping straight up. Go ahead, jump straight up into the air. All right, that's your vertical leap. Way farther than that, man. <laughs> I always wait until I get a no way or something, and I just go farther. That is actually more like it, right there. You see that? 
So that's vertical leap vertical. from a standstill, 18 feet, five and a half meters. What? All right? That is insane. Now, if you think that's insane, wait until Gavin and I show you the outward bound leap. So running, 45 miles per hour, the long jump, sprinting, jumping. Here we go. Okay, we're getting close. I run There we go. All right, Gavin, hold that nice and tight. So that's where we're at, folks. You see that? That's a 45-foot outward bound leap. No. About 14 meters. Okay, so the mountain lion, we have recorded them jumping from where I'm at. All right, jumping out, and they could tag Gavin over there without hitting the ground. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get a appreciation for why this cat has been called and is called the god of hunters. Now, if you're really, really nerdy, you can do the parabolic trajectory math. And I'm not saying I did it, but I did it. And, um, and uh, it's kind of like, you know, you're vertical and you're outward and the arc and all that good stuff. And you do that and you can figure out some pretty cool things. Like, for example, you know, March Madness going on. Um, I figured they could take a basketball with these arcs and they could run, if they could, and jump from the three-point line and slam dunk from the three-point line. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we went back to the Phantom Ranch store to get another cup of their delicious lemonade. We also got some postcards and filled them out for our grandparents on both sides. It's really interesting how it goes. It goes out by mule, which is probably one of the only places uh, you can send a postcard by mule. So we made sure to fill those out and send them off. And it was a really fun evening. put on a really neat show about mountain lions and um, we learned a ton of incredible beasts so it was, a, it was a good lesson we also did some uh, teaching about the stars and what, what the constellations are that are visible right above our heads so it was a fun night So we just filled we just did a, a postcard to Grandma and Grandpa and Papa and Oma and put it in the saddlebag. And tomorrow it goes up, right up out of the canyon on a mule, and it gets mailed over. So it's kind of cool. The next morning we got up early and we began the hike up to the next camp which is called Indian Garden Campground. It's about 3,000 feet elevation higher than the Colorado River where we had just spent the night and it was an incredibly scenic trail. You get to walk along the Colorado for at least a couple of miles before starting the, the ascending over and then the views of the Colorado just become better every step you take. How is it? 
the Bright Angel Trail. You come down on the South Kaibab Trail and you go back out on the Bright Angel. You can see you're starting to get higher and higher every step. You start to walk away from the Colorado River. The nice thing about this trail though, it follows the river for a couple miles before going up. So you get a beautiful, amazing, idea of what the bottom of the canyon looks like. It's really nice. up that switch back there. You can see the uh, switch back and we're this morning down by the Colorado River which is in there. So we've made some good elevation climbs here. That's a sheer cliff. I don't know if you can see but how far down that goes. At least a thousand foot drop and we're heading up there. Still got a ways to go. Amazing scenery in here though. And what a workout, Whew. awesome.
When we arrived at Indian Garden Camp, we set up our tents again and cooked a delicious meal and then enjoyed the rest of the afternoon watching the sun go down, surrounded by the great walls of the Grand Canyon. When I saw that sign, the word, that, like the first sign was when the people were passing. And that's when I saw that little switch The next morning we got up before the sun and made a delicious pancake breakfast so that we'd have energy for the day of hiking ahead of us. Now from Indian Garden Camp, it's another 3,000 feet climb to the top of the South Rim and that's what we had ahead of us. You hike straight what looks like going straight to a sheer cliff and when you get closer you begin to see the switchback trail that meanders back and forth all the way to the top. It's an amazing, strenuous, but absolutely beautiful climb and it's well worth it uh, for anybody who's interested in seeing the canyon from the inside, which is such a unique perspective. Your feet in. New Zealand or what? Nice. Yeah, it's smart. We're heading out of camp now. Last uh, stop before we reach the top. We're going up that rim, the south rim, 3,000 feet. And that's the end of the trail. So this is day three in the Grand Canyon.
When we finally made it to the top of the south rim of the Grand Canyon, our legs were sore but our hearts were full. It was such a rewarding experience and such a sense of accomplishment that came over all of us. Less than 1%, they told us, of the visitors to the Grand Canyon actually make it down to the Phantom Ranch or to the Colorado River and back up. So it was an amazing hike and if you uh, feel up to it, I highly re recommend it. I hope you really enjoy this week's footage from the inside of the Grand Canyon. Thank you to all of our 13,000 plus Epic family members, those of you who have subscribed to our channel. And if you haven't, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified of every single adventure. We post a new adventure video every weekend, Sunday morning at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. Um, we really appreciate hearing from you. If you have any comments or questions, uh, leave those for us as well. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And please share the video, share it with a friend somebody you, you know that might be interested in adventure travel or maybe someday going on an epic family road trip themselves. We'd love to have them join the epic family as well. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. road.